Okay, so today we're going to talk about solving linear inequalities. Solving linear inequalities is very similar to solving linear equations. Just a couple of different steps you have to take. So the first thing that we're going to do to get started is we are going to talk about how to determine solutions for an inequality. So we're going to check possible solutions. There are three solutions here, x equals 0, x equals 5, and x equals 6. So the way that we do that is we plug in each possible solution for x and we simplify and see if it makes the inequality true. So we're going to start here by plugging in 0 for x. So we have 2 times 0 minus 3 is less than 7. So what we get is 0 minus 3 is less than 7. Negative 3 is less than 7, which is true. So if it makes the inequality true, then 0 is a solution to this system of inequality, or to this inequality, sorry. All right, so let's try x equals 5. So 2 times 5 minus 3 has to be less than 7. So 10 minus 3 is less than 7. 7 less than 7, that's not true. So x equals 5 is not a solution to this system to this linear inequality. Goodness gracious, it's late. Okay, so let's check the last one, x equals 6. So we're going to say 2 times 6 minus 3 less than 7. 12 minus 3 less than 7. 9 less than 7, also not true. Okay, so 0 is one solution. Inequalities have many solutions, okay? So 0 is just one of the solutions. So 6 and 5 are not solutions, but 0 is. Okay? All right, let's look at another example. This one is checking possible solutions in what we call a double inequality. And what you'll notice about this is that there's an inequality symbol on both sides of the expression in the middle. And so this is called a double inequality. We're going to solve it very similarly, but we're going to go ahead and check solutions in this first. So the first thing we're going to do is check 0. So we say negative 1 is less than 4 times 0 minus 1 is less than or equal to 11. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and simplify that. Negative 1 is less than 4 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1, less than or equal to 11. Okay, so basically what we're saying is on this side that negative 1 is less than negative 1, which is not true. Negative 1 is less than or equal to 11, but negative 1 is not less than negative 1. So therefore 0 is not a solution. Okay, so now we're going to try x equals 2. So negative 1 is less than 4 times 2 minus 1 is less than or equal to 11. So negative 1 is less than 8 minus 1 less than or equal to 11. Negative 1 is less than 7 less than or equal to 11. So what you want to ask yourself is, is 7 in between negative 1 and 11? And the answer is yes, it is. So therefore, x equals 2 is a solution to this inequality, one of the many solutions. Okay? All right. So the next one we're going to try is 3. Okay? So we're going to say negative 1 is less than 4 times 3 minus 1 is less than or equal to 11. And we're going to simplify that. When you simplify that, you get negative 1 is less than 12 minus 1 is less than or equal to 11. Okay, so we're still good. Negative 1 is less than 11 is less than or equal to 11. So are both sides of the inequality true? Is negative 1 less than 11? Hopefully you said yes. Is 11 less than or equal to 11? Yes, because it's equal to. Okay? So, um, again, we have another solution, x equals 3, that is also a possible solution to this double inequality. Okay? So that, those are, that's how you determine solutions, just by plugging them in and seeing if they make the inequality true or false. True, then they're a solution. False, they're not a solution. Okay? 
All right, so let's just talk about solving inequalities. So this, these are one-step inequalities. These ones are pretty easy. And basically on this one, x minus 4 is less than 2. They subtracted 4, so we need to do the opposite of that, which is add 4. So we're going to add 4 to both sides, and we're going to get that x is less than 6. So our solution to this inequality is that x is less than 6. Any real number less than 6 will make this inequality true. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a number line to show the solution. So you basically draw your number line, mark your 0, mark your 6, open or close circle. Hopefully you said open. Which way do I go? Hopefully you said to the left, Mrs. Rivers. So we're going to the left, drawing that in, shading that, making a nice little number line to show the solution. Any questions? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, let's go to the next one. Solving inequalities with multi-steps. So you'll notice now that you have an x on both sides of the inequality. So what we need to do is we need to get the x's on the left, the constants on the right. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x from both sides, which gives me negative 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 3. Okay. Now I'm going to add 1 to both sides, which gives me negative 2x is less than or equal to 4. Now the last thing I need to do is divide by negative 2. Now remember I said that there's a little trick here, a little twist. When you divide through or multiply through by a negative when it's an inequality, you have to switch the symbol. Okay? Not the sign, the symbol, the inequality symbol. So if I divide by negative 2 on both sides, I get x, and I'm going to change the less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. It's greater than or equal to negative 2. That's my solution. Every number greater than or equal to negative 2 will make this inequality true. So we draw a number line. We go to negative 2. Open or closed. Closed greater than or equal to, so we have to go to the right. Shade that in, you've got your number line solution. Okay? Here's another multi-step. Basically, just a lot of distributing in this one. Okay? So we're going to distribute. We're going to multiply the 2 times the 5 and the 2 times the negative 3x. So we get 10 minus 6x plus going to distribute the 3. 6x minus 3 is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. Next thing we have to do is combine like terms. So we have here a negative 6x plus a 6x. Well, when we add opposites, they tend to go away. So that's gone. 10 minus 3 is 7. We have 7 is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So, I like, when, especially when I'm doing inequalities, I like my variable to be on the left-hand side. And I know it makes it a little bit more work, but I like it on the left-hand side, because then I don't have any questions about which way my arrow needs to go. So, I'm going to subtract 2x and bring it over here. So, I get 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 1. So 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 1. And then I'm going to subtract 7, and I'm going to get 2x is less than or equal to negative 6. Oh, sorry, negative 2x. I apologize. Sorry about that. That's a negative 2x. Because when I moved it over, it became negative. Sorry. Now I've got to divide through by a negative. So what's going to happen to my symbol? That's correct. It's going to switch. So now it's greater than or equal to 3. Number line, 0, 3, closed circle, 
to the right. And there you have your number line to show your solution. Every number greater than or equal to 3 will solve that inequality, or make that inequality true is what I should say. All right, so double inequalities is the last thing we need to look at. These are probably going to be, mm, I don't want to say they're going to be the most challenging, but they might be challenging for you, okay? All right, so we are going to um, treat this, mm, well, we're just going to treat it with kid gloves, okay? So we're going to, first of all, take and um, subtract the 6 from both sides of the equation, okay? So what we get is that negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 3. Now, do we know how to graph that solution on a number line? Sure we do. We practiced it before, right? When we were talking about interval notation, okay? So just as a review, interval notation would be bracket negative 4 comma 3 parentheses, right? So we come down here to our number line, 0, negative 4, positive 3, and I need to shade, I need a closed circle at 4, I need to shade everything here, and I need an open circle or if you want to, you can do the bracket and the parentheses since that's what we're kind of used to doing now. Okay? So the bracket and parentheses will work perfectly fine, but make sure you shade in between. All right. How's everybody doing out there? Are you awake? Okay, this video is a little bit longer than the other one, but it's almost over, I promise. All right, so what if I need to solve inequalities with fractions? Okay? All right. So... Remember the other day when we had fractions, when we were solving linear equations, we just multiplied through by a common denominator. Well, the common denominator here is 4. So we're going to take 4 and multiply it on both sides. So we're going to get 5x plus 7 is less than or equal to negative 12. Simple, right? So we're going to subtract 7. We're going to get 5x is less than or equal to negative 12 minus 7 is negative 19. We're going to divide by 5. x is less than or equal to negative 19 fifths. Show that on a number line. Okay? So we have 0, negative 19 fifths. Well, that's almost 4. Okay? It's negative 3 and 4 fifths. Okay? It's almost negative 4. So I'm going to go to negative 4. And I'm going to just go right here, and I'm going to put negative 19 fourths. And I'm going to color that in, or put a bracket, whichever one you want to do. And I'm going to go to the left. Just make sure that you give me some kind of reference point, and then you tell me where you're starting. Oops, negative 19 fifths. Sorry, that's negative 19 fifths. I apologize. Okay, negative 19 fifths. Okay, all right. Okay, one more. Solving double inequalities with fractions. No different. You're just going to multiply through by a common denominator. So in this case, you're going to multiply through by 3. So you have to do it on the left, in the middle, and on the right. So 3 times 4 is 12, is greater than or equal to these 3's cancel. 2y minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Now you multiply through by a positive, so you didn't have to change any of the symbols. But if you have to multiply through by a negative number, make sure you're changing symbols. All right, so now what's our next step? Our next step is to add 5 to both ends of the inequality. Okay, remember, double inequality means we do everything twice. Okay, so we're going to get 17 is greater than or equal to 2y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And then the last thing we have to do is divide by 2 on both sides. Okay, double inequality, do everything twice. So we get 17 halves is greater than or equal to y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. Well, that's interesting. That didn't come out the way I wanted it to, I don't think. 
17 halves. Oh, yes, it did. Because we can simply turn that around. Sorry, guys. To negative 1 half is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 17 halves. Okay? That's the same thing as 17 halves is greater than or equal to y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. I'm just reading it backwards, okay? Negative 1 half is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 17 halves. 17 halves is 8.5, okay? So when you draw your number line, you need 0. Here's a 1. Here's negative 1 half, okay? If it's 8.5, well, show me 8. Show me 9. Show me 8.5. 17 halves, or you can write it as 8.5, okay? It's in between those two numbers, less than or equal to on both sides. So we are coloring in on both sides, and we are shading in between. Okay? That concludes tonight's programming, and I hope you're having a wonderful evening, and I hope that this didn't keep you up too late. I'm almost, I'm done, and we're at 16 minutes and 17, 18, 19, 20 seconds. I'm going to stop now. See y'all tomorrow.